Hello class, International Cuisine, this is Chapter 15, Cuisines of the Indian Subcontinent. Part of the Indian Subcontinent is going to be Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. All these countries are surrounded uh, by ocean, by water, um, and also they have, up to the north, they have mountainous. Uh, in the center, it's very fertile. In the south, it's very tropical. The Persian uh, Arabic influence uh, long, long ago, um, which was ran by also the Mogu um, Empire between 1526 and 1857. So this uh, Mogu um, Empire surrounded all of these um, mentioned countries uh, that I just mentioned right now, uh, but also when the empire was um, in place, they would go all the way up to Afghanistan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Turkmenistan, all those in Central Asia. Uh, so the Mughal uh, Empire extended all the way up north uh, through Afghanistan, etc. Um, then eventually the European spice trade became very popular. First the Turkish came, uh, of course, we know that uh, India, we're going to focus on India for the most part, but we know that India is very rich with their spices and their herbs. Um, also, they're popular for their ghee, which is essentially um, clarified butter. Um, so the Turkish were the first to come, then the Dutch, um, and eventually the British. They all opened trading posts around this area, this region, because of its uh, rich, fertile uh, fields and the product that they were uh, producing um, and eventually uh, leading to British colonial period which ended in 1947. Uh, this is the reason a lot of Indians speak uh, English because of the colonization that ended in 1947. Uh, if you look at history that's not too long ago in my opinion. Um, so the, the British were there at, with an outpost to sell spices and herbs uh, going around the world, and um, eventually when the British colonial period was over, um, Hinduism came out uh, along the way. Hinduism, 80% of uh, the population in India uh, are Hindu and are vegetarians, so this is very important to know, um, especially uh, a lot of people think that Indian food is just spicy or it's curry, curry, curry. Uh, and that's not necessarily true. We, we will discuss that a little a little further. Um, but India, as I mentioned, occupies much of the Indian subcontinent. Um, it's the home to the Himalayan mountains, which are the world's highest, and it's to the north of India. Uh, in the center of India, they have many rivers and also uh, a lot and lots of fertile lands. Um, at least a quarter of India is uh, forested, and they also have Arctic weather to the north, and tropical weather to the south. 60% of the workforce in India, which is uh, um, almost almost the majority, 60% of them uh, work in the areas of agriculture, agriculture related. 60% uh, of the Indian workforce, that's quite a bit. And also India has approximately 23 official languages, with uh, English being one of them. Uh, the, the Mughal Empire which was Muslim, uh, ruled for all those years, um, as I had mentioned, um, and things uh, changed. So they have been through quite a bit of changes with also the British, uh, the Mughal um, uh, dynasty or the uh, empire. Um, and also due to the wet climate and rich cultures of spice, herbs, and other ingredients, uh, other countries uh, want to cash in on it. Um, after after the Turkish uh, opened their trading posts, the uh, the Dutch and then the British, um, this happened all the way to 1947 that there was these outposts, these trading posts that people would come from everywhere to purchase these spices and herbs. Um, so uh, Hinduism and Buddhism um, is is very predominant in India, um, and and what this does is it changes the whole uh, spectrum of their diet. Uh, of Indian vegetarianism. So if we're talking about 80% being vegetarian, um, we know that 
they must have or they have to have some good vegetables um if you if you look at uh page 383 in your textbook the hinduism uh, and the resulting the vegetarianism sort of the same concept um of chinese philosophy for example the chinese they have the yin and the yang which is a philosophy dealing with a, a good balance of living a good balance of life uh and we'll we'll talk more about the yin and the yang in chapter 17 but the hindus believe in something similar the hindus believe uh, in maintaining a balance to diet and also they believe in maintaining a balance which is a uh, um uh, uh partly uh, by including certain foods and their regular diet and uh, minimizing or avoiding others uh, in the category. So there are three categories that the um, vegetarianism uh, follow. Um, so there, there are different ones uh, which has to do with faith. It all boils down to faith. When they eat, um, it, all, it all deals with faith, that they have a big faith in their religion it costs for uh, vegetarianism um so the three different kind of foods right so first of all the faith they, they 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 look at it as an effect on the mind and the body uh the body balance and overall health uh which you'll see on page 385 and the three types of foods are broken down into three categories right the three categories uh sattvic foods uh which are cereals dairy legumes grains tea milk uh, honey and ghee. All these foods here, uh, as an aggregate, uh, they're considered pure, pure for the mind, pure for the body, uh, maybe, uh, better, healthier options. But they consider these foods sattvic and means they're pure. Uh, rah rahasic, rahasic, uh, foods are going to be your spicy, uh, herbs and, um, spices, herbs, uh, coffee, tea, salt, chocolate, fish, and eggs. They consider these foods rahisic and rahisic meaning uh, stimulating. Okay, so these types of foods are stimulating to the body and to the mind. Um, tamasic is the third category. Tamasic foods are more of uh, meats, fish, onions, garlic, mushrooms, and alcohol, of course. Um, and these foods here, as an aggregate together, they are considered uh, foods that make you sluggish, and also they're impure for the body and for the soul. Um, spices in India, um, spices are a hallmark or their trademark of India. The first thing I think about are different types of aromas, different types of spiciness, different levels of spiciness, um, but they are known for their spices. And in India, they have all the different regions. Not two regions are alike. There's not two regions that are going to have the same thing. Everywhere you go, they're known for something uh, a little different. So first of all, Indian food, the first thing people think is curry. Curry, curry, curry. Uh, but the truth is, is that's not all there is to uh, Indian cuisine. Uh, curry is not just uh, in India. Uh, every Asian country, just about, just about every Asian country has their own type of curry. Uh, there's mild, there's spicy, there's hot, and there's also green curry. I, I believe I like green curry better than just a regular curry. Um, and curry essentially is going to be a mixture of many different seasonings, mostly vibrant, flavorful, some spicy, and uh, some a little bit more subtle. Um, the most popular uh, seasoning that they use in India is called garam masala. Uh, some people mistaking it for marsala wine, but there is no R in masala. So garam mas masala is going to be a mixture of uh, different uh, things like cinnamon, pepper, black cardamom, uh, cloves, and ground green cardamom as well. So that's garam mas uh, masala. Um, other things, uh, for example, like curry. Uh, if you look on page 357, curry is actually the word from kari, K-A-R-I, kari. And what that means is uh, it's curry, but what it means is any sauce or dish uh, containing um, uh, any dish containing a sauce could be considered a curry. Or originally they would call it karai. Um, chutney, 
A uh, chutney is essentially a relish, normally sweet, uh, possibly uh, hot or spicy, maybe mild with fruits or vegetables. Uh, the seasoning is very robust. Uh, sometimes it's very hot and sometimes it has a little sweetness. Pickles. Pickles are very predominant in India as well. They make all kinds of pickles. Um, and then their spices. We, we talked about the spices a little bit ago that that's a trademark or the hallmark to this country. Uh, the spices are taken uh, very serious in India. Um, they're not just uh, your typical uh, cooks or chefs where you just uh, throw the salt, the pepper, and the garlic, and that's it. Well, in India, the Indian cuisine and all the surrounding countries, they're, they're very much into their spices. And uh, they include frying spices. Um, some might wonder, how do you fry spices? Uh, it's kind of like... Um, when you're making sofrito in Spanish cooking, tomatoes and bell peppers and onions, um, and then you add the seasonings and you fry that up. And in this case, the spices in India, they do a lot of frying of it. Uh, they do roasting, they do grinding, uh, also crushing, uh, and even uh, sauteing the spices. Um, as I mentioned in lecture many times, that we build uh, we build our flavors in layers. We don't just throw everything in a pot and let it go. Uh, some people say that Asian cuisine is very hard to cook, and it's actually not, um, but uh, it is very flavorful, and considering that they are mostly vegetarian, uh, they, they pay uh, a lot of attention, they focus on their vegetables, the textures, the flavors, uh, the mouthfeel. Uh, they focus on all of these different things uh, because they're not, they're not eating protein like we do, smoking meats or seasoning meats, etc. They focus more on their vegetables. So their vegetables are very colorful, very robust, very flavorful, and they know how to cook them really good. Uh, fermented foods uh, are also very popular in Indian cuisine. Um, Indian cuisine, uh, we do have a couple of Indian restaurants here in um, Corpus. Um, and one in Kingsville. As a matter of fact, we have a student that graduated from Del Mar College and he has the Spice Station, which is in Kingsville. And his food is supposed to be very good. I believe there's something called butter chicken that they're known for. Um, this uh, graduate from Del Mar opened his restaurant in Kingsville with his family and they're doing very well. Also, what I wanted to add is after you view this lecture, this very short lecture, um, I'm going to post a link to um, to an Indian uh, edition um, of uh, Chef Ramsey. If you like Chef Ramsey, you enjoy the video. Um, it's not just a matter of Chef Ramsey or a matter of uh, posting it just to post it, but um, it has over a million views. And I, I thought it is a very good, uh, it's a very good video. It explains to you a lot about the Indian cuisine. It takes place in Great Britain. Um, he, he's looking for the best, uh, Indian restaurant. So it's very helpful to look at that video. If you would, I will place a link at the end of this. Um, I will be posting another lecture on Southeastern Asia. And then I'm going to owe you one on, uh, China. Uh, and the rest of the Orients. I hope everyone is doing well up to this point. There has been a delay. Uh, we weren't prepared for this. Uh, this is no one's fault. Some people are upset or complaining, uh, saying they didn't sign up for this online thing. Um, I'm trying to get us through the semester successfully. And again, as always, if there's anything that you missed or anything that you would like to try, I will gladly have you back in any of my classes in the future. That's a guarantee that I give to all my students. I hope this was helpful, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know if there's anything else I can do. Uh, we have approximately two weeks left of class and uh, your final exam, which I will be giving you at least 72 hours to complete that exam. Um, and we will talk soon. Everyone stay safe, and uh, thank you for your time and attention.